Hey everybody. One of the weirdest things about Python is that when you do something wrong, you get these really big, really scary error messages um, that are called tracebacks if you look up at the top. And these can be very long and full of all sorts of blocks of code and you don't really know what they're coming from and often they have very confusing explanation of, of what's going on. And because these tracebacks tend to be so ugly looking and full of funny colors and code that you just kind of, you don't know where it came from, a lot of people tend to just skip over tracebacks and not spend time figuring out what's going on there. And that's really a lost opportunity because while it is true that sometimes tracebacks have stuff that you don't care about or you're not going to understand, they are also one of the best tools that are available for debugging your code and trying to understand how something went wrong. So what I want to do today is just talk a little bit about how tracebacks work and help you understand what it is that those are actually presenting to you. So as in your own day-to-day -day life, you start running into them, you can start start making use of them to help you um, become a more effective data scientist. So in order to understand these traceback calls, the first thing we need to do is talk a little bit about the way that functions work in a language like Python. So, okay. So if you're working in a language like Python, it's very common to have functions that call other functions. So let's imagine as an example, we have a function called, my handwriting is gonna get me in a lot of trouble here, take nap. So when we call this function, what actually happens in Python is Python takes a little chunk of memory and allocates it to execution of that function. And within this little chunk of memory, we can store any variables that get passed. So for example, let's say that we pass to take nap the value of the number of minutes that we want to nap, right? So if we actually wrote the function, we would be writing take nap of two. And let's say in this function, that value of two gets stored as the variable minutes, right? So what actually happens is within this, um, what's often called a stack frame, we're gonna store that value of two associated with the variable minutes. Now let's assume that in our function, we wanna convert that time in minutes into a time in seconds. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to call another function called minutes to seconds, and we're gonna pass it that minutes function. Now, when we actually call a different function, what's gonna happen is Python is gonna open up an entirely new stack frame. Minutes to seconds to execute this function. Now the number of minutes that we passed in will come in. And then within that, whatever code is in that function will actually execute. So in this example, we may have that we create a new variable called seconds, which is gonna be equal to 120. When that finishes executing, then that value of 120 may get passed back to this. That function is now done running, so we make it go away and it kind of disappears into the void. And now our original function can go back on running the way it was running to, for example, actually go to sleep for 120 seconds and actually sleep, right? And so it is important to understand that within Python, when you call a function, that function ends up basically opening up a new stack frame, executing that other function, and that can happen over and over. So for example, the function you call may call another function, which calls another function, et cetera. And those keep opening up these new stack frames. The reason that this is important to understand is this is actually what you are seeing when you see these error codes that are coming in Python. They are basically trying to show you this picture. Um, sorry, what do we call this? Minutes to seconds. What they are actually trying to do is help you understand this flowchart to understand where in one of these trees the errors are showing up. All right, so that's very abstract. Let's try to make this a little bit more concrete. So I'm gonna put away this. We're gonna write some code. All right, so let's suppose we're gonna write a new function and this is going to be our
that function. Okay, hopefully we're all familiar with JupyterLab structure at this point. Shrink this up just a little bit. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is define this nap function, which is going to take some number of minutes. And then what it's actually going to do, we have to import the time function. In Python, there's a, uh, oops, sorry, time. There's a method called time.sleep. And so we can pass it however long we want things to sleep. And then we have a function that will cause our computer to just kind of hang out. So if you run this code, and then I try to nap for two minutes, and I run this, you'll see that it waits, but that clearly was not actually two minutes that it waited. And that's because time.sleep actually wants seconds and not minutes as the object that it's reading. And so what we need to do is add another function here, which is gonna be called minutes to seconds of minutes. Yep, time 60. I can do units, and then we're going to return seconds. Right, so now, now that we have these functions, if I try to run, and I'm now going to run it for a much shorter period of time because it should work, nap of, let's do, say, five, si five sixtieths of a minute, which, of course, is going to be five seconds, right? All we call is nap, but we now know that nap is, um, oh, Nope, and I wrote that wrong. There we go. Right, and now nap is going to hold for about five seconds. So, you know, what's happening when we call nap, we now know, is that nap is also calling minutes to seconds. And so what happens is um, Python calls nap. It gets the call to minutes to seconds, and so it pauses the execution of nap. It goes over to minutes of seconds, it runs that function, and then it takes the return value, puts it back, and finishes running nap. So let's suppose now that we add some kind of error here. Um, so let's say instead of minutes, we inadvertently call this variable number of minutes, right? Number of minutes has never been defined, so that's not actually going to work. Um, so we can define the function, but then if we once again tried to call, take a nap for 5 sixtieths of a second, we're going to get an error. And what's nice is now we can see how this is trying to illustrate for us where the error occurred. So first, it's telling us the type of error. It's a name error, which, as it says at the bottom, means that it was looking for the name num minutes, but it was not defined. And you might say, well, I called nap, and nap doesn't have num minutes, so where did this come up? So the traceback shows us, first of all, that the code that was being called, and this is obvious because we only ran one line of code, but if you're running a block, this is helpful, was when we called nap four or five sixtieths of a minute, that's where we hit a problem. What it then shows us is where within the function nap we hit a problem, which is on the line where we try to define seconds is equal to minute to seconds as a function of minutes. But the problem here didn't occur in this particular method or function. The problem occurred as it was calling this function. And so now it's going to go into that function. It's going to show us the inside of that function and show us where the problem occurred. So down here at the bottom, we see that while we were in minutes to seconds, we ran into a problem while we were running this line of code because number of minutes was not defined. Right? So this is how, even though all we called was nap, it is telling us where all the way back in all of our function calls the problem is actually originating in our code. Right? And we can extend this. This doesn't have to be quite so short. You know, it can be two functions. It can be three functions. It could go as long as it wanted. So let's suppose that I'm a really bad sleeper, and so when my timer goes off, I inevitably end up continuing to sleep for a little bit longer. So I want my function to lie to me, and if I tell it to sleep for five minutes, I actually only want it to sleep for four minutes so that hopefully I actually get up in time for whatever I'm trying to do. So we're now going to add a adjustment to the number of seconds we want things to sleep, which is shorten 
map of seconds. And now we have to go define this function shorten nap. Uh, so we're going to call that seconds is equal to seconds times 0 0.9, right? So it's going to be 90 return seconds. Uh, but let's now assume that, again, I add some type of mistake in this bottommost function. Oh, and syntax errors will be caught right away. So again, I'm going to make this mistake of calling it num seconds. We're going to fix the bug in the other function. And now let's say that we want to run this set of code, right? So going back to the illustration that we had before, what we've now done is written a tier of three functions. So let me quickly go back to our drawing minutes to seconds. And now we've added this extra step, which is while min to seconds is running, we're going to add this other function, which is going to be shorten nap. So in this case, we have introduced this small error in our code, which is going to occur when it's running shorten nap. And so the stack overflow, sorry, the traceback that we are going to expect to see from Python is going to say, while running nap, I ran into a problem. It occurred while I was running minutes to seconds. And within minutes to second, it occurred when I tried to call shorten nap. Right, so where before we had this kind of two level traceback, this time we're expecting to see a three level traceback. So let's see what we get when we call nap of 560s. Exactly what we expected. Right, so let's stretch this out a little bit. Again, we get a name error, which at the bottom they remind us what that means. It says the name num seconds was not defined. But if we had just called nap, we would say, well, I never called num seconds. Where is that coming from? So it says, well, the error occurred within the function nap when I was trying to call minutes to seconds. Within minutes to seconds, it occurred when I was trying to call shorten nap. And within short nap, it occurred when I tried to call this line of code seconds equals to num seconds times 0 0.9, right? So again, this is what allows us to really see the structure of the errors that we are running into in these various places and allows you to go through and debug, right? So if you had some type of big script that called nap, you now know that when nap hits an error, you don't need to waste time looking at minutes to seconds. You can jump to this code for short nap and you know exactly where you are going to find the error that is causing you trouble within your code. Now, when you are working in pandas, things may not be quite as transparent when you call these types of things, right? So let's go back to this example where we had a data frame with a number of different columns, and we try to call a column that we don't know. So the first thing is going to say, it's going to say it's a key error. I'll tell you exactly why they're calling that a key error, but it shows that it was trying to call this line of code. When it was calling that line of code, it was calling the frame. It was in the file frame core pandas, and it was trying to call the function get item. It ran into this problem at line 2902 of that script. Uh, which in turn was calling the get lock function from inside of core indices base, um, and it raised this particular key error, right? Now, it's probably the case that you're not going to go into pandas and try to track down kind of what the original file was in the script. So, you know, how much value this will be will depend on kind of whether there are layers to that traceback that you recognize. Um, but this definitely tells you that the problem is coming from pandas, right? Because the farthest down thing that we looked at was pandas. So we know this isn't a problem with some other library that's causing kind of installation problems or something like that. Um, we also know that it's in the function get lock. We know that lock, L-O-C, is the way of subsetting data frames using either row labels or column labels. So we know that it's probably a problem having to do with looking up labels and not row numbers or indices. And then we have this key error that um, says that the problem was that region was not matched to anything. So this kind of gives you a sense that the error that we're running into is within pandas. And while you can't do a lot more with that particular information in this context, at least you have a sense of what's going on. 
The fact that it's a key error is also very helpful for you to know as a bit of a digression. When you write a dictionary in Python, so let's say uh, my pets is equal to um, my dog's name is Trillian. She's a dog. Uh, when I was growing up, I had a gerbil named Tripod. Within that dictionary, the first term that you are using, in this case, the name of my pet, is what's called a key. So, trillion is the key, and dog, the thing that it's associated with, is a value. And so, within a um, pandas data frame, what is actually happening when you try to pull out a column name is it's looking it up as though it were a dictionary. And so when you see a key error, what that means is it was trying to look for a column or a row that had the name you are looking for, and it couldn't find it in its list of labels. Um, similarly, if you're working with dictionaries and you try to pull up something that isn't in there, so I've never owned a dog named Fido, what you will get is a key error, which is basically saying that key does not exist in here. And so that's the same whether you are working with dictionaries or data frame labels. And so that's where you also start to learn what these types of things mean. As I said, you'll also get used to different types of errors. So another one that you will often come about is a value error. So let's do npy mean of kiddos. Oh, that's a name error, sorry. So NP is not defined because I never imported NumPy. Now I'm going to get a type error because what I pass to this is a string and NumPy doesn't know how to work with strings. And so it's telling me, hey, what you tried to put in here is something that I can't convert into a string. And so I can't do anything with this particular thing. We can see that the problem is occurring within NumPy methods. Um, so if we were to try to look for a way around this, we would look within NumPy. Um, but that type error tells you about kind of the nature of what is going wrong with this type of thing. So, you know, if I passed a four, it would work as a four. So anyway, that's a little bit about tracebacks and hopefully that demystifies them a little bit and will be helpful for you in learning to debug your code. Thanks.